his faithfulness his continues through all generations. We have a lot to thank for. 129 years don't come easy. We've been through blood, sweat, and tears, but God is still good. We have now our Leroy joins me, of course. We now open up with a selection. Let's welcome them. Come on, let's welcome our choir. Well, good morning, everyone. Seeking as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierced my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, who him I must win. Oh, how I want to see him look upon his face that a sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past. Gonna be home at last ever to. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I cling more close to him, he will give me light. Satan snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead. Whatever be tied. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. That will sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past. Gonna be home. Yeah. Oh, I want to, I want to see him look upon his face. There to see forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice, cares all past. Gonna be home at last. Yeah. Oh, I want. I want to see him. Oh, I want. I want to see him. Early in the morning. I want to see him. In the noon day, I want to see him. In the midnight hour, I want to see him. I just want to look upon his face. I just want to look upon his face. Do you want to see him? Somebody ought to blow their horn 
today. I want to see him. 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 Do you want to see him? Early in the morning, in the noonday, yeah. Late in the midnight hour, I want to see him. I want to see him. I want to see him. Cares all past. Gonna be home at last. One more time, cares all past. Gonna be home at last. Ever to cares all past. Home at last. Ever to rejoice. Good morning, church family. Happy anniversary. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forget our debt as we forget our debtor. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Oh, wonderful and precious Lord, we come today, Lord, saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, we thank you that we're in the midst of each other, Lord. Through all we've been through, Lord, we stand. Lord, we thank you for our ancestors this morning, Lord. We thank you that they paved the way. We thank you for the church family, Lord. We thank you collectively, individually, Lord, as we stand. We thank you for our elders, Lord, because they bring us vision and hope. They give us history, Lord. We thank you for our youth, Lord, because they lead us to our future. We thank you this morning, God, for who you are, Lord, that we know you for ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for our church family, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in sorrow, Lord, you keep us and you comfort us. But you bring us joy in the morning. Lord, we thank you most of all for your unconditional love, Lord, that you give us new grace and new mercy each and every day, Lord. You sustain us, Lord. You take care of us, Lord. You heal our bodies, Lord. Through this pandemic, Lord, we can stand and say we know a risen Savior this morning. We have an anchor that we can hold on to. Lord, we thank you for all those blessings. In the sweet, sweet name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Kenny. And now uh, I'd like to welcome everyone today. We are in, in behalf of the pastor. I know you can't hear me. On behalf of the pastor, Diggins, and Diggins Ministry, our trustee ministry, we'd like to welcome each and every one, our friends and members to our celebration today. And we want you to remember that God is still strengthening us. He's still giving us life and want us to move on and carry on. We're going to see another 129 more years, and we're asking you to just keep your hand in his hand and urge each and every day. Everyone is welcome. And we are, want you today to celebrate. We don't want you to, if you want to get out and, you know, keep your six, your six feet away, but we want you to celebrate him today. We don't want, we don't want the pandemic to say we are, because sometimes you're like this. But you want to worship like she just said, a risen Savior. He has so much, to, we have so much to honor and to give him. So just give him some praise. Give him another praise. Give him another praise. We're going to see who the last. Let them hear you way back on Staples Mill Road. Let them know that we know who God is. We're going to carry on. Bless you. Bless you. At this time, we're going to recognize some members who had joined the church. Uh, celebration of welcome of our right hand of fellowship. 
I'm going to ask Dig and Mental Bell to come forward along with our pastor, and they will be in charge of this at this time. Good morning. I will ask that the following persons will come forward, please, to receive your certificate of membership on behalf of the Pilgrim Journey Baptist Church. Jason R. Rush. Jason R. Rush. Janice Figgins. Pitt, turn around and face the crowd so they can see you. Taisha Pittman. <laughs> Reverend Benjamin Cox. Oh, yeah. Karen Dyer. Reverend Dr. Lorenzo E. Dyer. Deborah D. Palmer. These certificates are presented to persons who has confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and has been received into the full membership of Pilgrim Journey Baptist Church in Rico, Virginia on this 18th day of October in the year of our Lord 2020, Reverend Angelo B. Chapman, Pastor. Amen. We welcome our new members to the Pilgrim Journey family. We've had to put this off for a few months due to the pandemic, but we thank God that today we found the occasion to be able uh, to welcome them in uh, to our church family. We're not, we're not do what we usually do and march around, and so I'm going to give them the right hand bump of fellowship. Amen. Amen. give our new members, our new family, another round of some beeps this morning. Let's welcome into the church family. Amen. Amen. Praise God. At this time, we are going to celebrate our tithes and offering. Uh, our ushers have been diligently working out there. They have envelopes. We ask you if you're able to give the offering of celebration of $129 toward uh, or give what you can toward our church anniversary it would be greatly appreciative. I'm going to give a uh, prayer over the offering and they will be moving through the orders and then they'll come back and then we'll move on with the service. Let's bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for what we're about to receive. We want to lift it up to your glory, God, because we know what you're going to do with it. We bless those who are able to give. We bless those who have, are not able to give. Just God, you are by God by yourself. You're just so worthy, and so we just want to lift you up. We want to magnify you. We want to glorify you. And, Lord, you know, whatever we do, we're going to give it all back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
gotta hang when it seems my hope is lost. See, I'm a witness, he'll hold you up. And in the process, he'll fill your cup. So I'm not worried, I'm not scared. I'm gon' trust like my bishop said. It's a message to the devil, you can't help our faith. And we gon' make a lot Come on and get on your feet. Come on, come on. Have everybody been served? All right, let's let's bow our head quickly again. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for what was received and what is going to be used for for the up glory of that kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. At this time, we're going to move forward in our service and before uh, we begin before our scripture and scripture will come. Uh, our not our guest, but our own pastor's preaching today. Aren't we thrilled about that this morning? So it's, it's always great to introduce someone, but he's already have introduced himself. For 21 years, he's been our pastor, the shepherd of this, of this flock. So it gives me great honor to have him to come and give us our anniversary uh, message for today. At this time, we're going to have Brandon Rosario to come bring our scripture and prayer, scripture, and also we're going to have our infinite ministry dancers will come and present us in a celebration. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. I will be reading from Psalms 139, verses 1 through 10. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. 
You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We cannot thank you enough. Please touch all of those that are here in attendance today. Touch those that could not make it today, Lord. Help those through any challenges that are going on through their life, Lord. Touch, touch them, Lord. Help them answer any of their prayers that they are asking, Lord. Guide us, Lord. In a challenging time through like this, we just need your guidance, Lord. Lead us. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
and let him consume everything not like him. 
surrender to the flames. We surrender to the embers of heaven. We surrender tonight. Consume us, O oh God. Let your presence be that all-consuming fire. We exalt you. We glorify you. We honor your name because you're worthy of our worship. You're worthy of our praise worthy of our adoration. Can I hear sons and daughters that love the Father open their mouth and just send up words of adoration and worship? Let's give them another shout out with our horns. Hallelujah. We thank God for infinite praise. Dance ministry is fantastic. Thank God for our male chorus. Thank God for our worship leader this morning, Deacon Phyllis Wadi, all who have been on the program. We thank God for all of you who have found your way out here this morning. God has given us a beautiful day in which to glorify and give praise to his name. I want to also thank uh, invisible to you all our Technology Committee, who have put all this together. Mr. Joe Smith, the uh, Chief of Church Technology. Patsy Holmes, our Technical Director of a couple of our programs here, Wednesday Night Insights and the Women's Bible Study. India Smith, who's here today, helping put all this together. We want to thank you all for what you've done, for your ministry to the church. And may God bless you extraordinarily uh, for your sacrifice and for your time. Everybody feel all right this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. You have heard the reading of the scripture. Brandon has done a beautiful job, and we thank God. For well, this young man who has been a powerful young man growing up in this church and what a great future he has. We thank God for him and for the prayer, both uh, early and uh, uh, for this sermon. Thank you. I want to talk for a few moments today on the subject, even there. Even there. Even there, Amen. almighty and everlasting God, thank you for what our eyes have seen and for what our ears have heard. Thank you, Lord, for your considerable grace and mercy, for allowing us to have what we needed to even come out here in the parking lot, on the lawn and worship your name. I thank you for the day you've given us. I thank you for our health and strength, for keeping us safe during this pandemic. And you brought us together, Lord, even out here, to give glory to your name, and we thank you for this. And now, Lord, as we are about to embark upon the preach word, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart help them and let them be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength, 
our strength, my redeemer, our redeemer. In the precious name of Jesus, it is that I pray. Amen. Even there. I want you to know this morning that I have, I have done it again. I have coined a new word. I have uh, invented a new word. And just like I thought that I had invented the word imagineer a few years ago, only to discover that it had already been thought of, may also be the fate of this new word I introduce to you today. But you all pray that it's, it's a first in the parking lot <laughs> at Pilgrim Journey. Give him grace, Father. Nevertheless, I'll give it a try. Hallelujah. The new word is this. This is the new word. This is the new word. The new word is every there. Every there. Every there. Say it to yourself. Every there. And since I have coined the new word, every there, I have also determined how to use the word every there. The word every there is a word used to better describe and explain an attribute of God that has to do with God's omnipresence. Amen. Omnipresence means God is everywhere. Amen. Come on now, God is all around. Come on now, but I want to substitute everywhere with every there. God is every there. Now, every there is better than everywhere. Everywhere is limited to a geographical area. I want you to hear this little lecture now. In other words, Everywhere is a location. For example, if I asked you where you lived, you could give me an address. If, if someone asked you for directions to the church, you could instruct them. This is because where, or the word where, indicates location. Now, when I apply this to God, it limits God to where everywhere might be. So if I say God is in the forest, that's where God is. But the forest is not everywhere. It's only somewhere. I hope y'all getting it this morning. Thus, Everywhere really means any place. A place is somewhere. Wherever you place God, that's where God is. In the place you say God was. You locate God where you have encountered God. You locate God, you locate God, you locate God. And God is somewhere for each of us. And if you can determine location, there is limitations to locations. God is everywhere. Amen. But God is not locatable. You cannot locate God anywhere. So I thought another word was needed to describe this virtue of God. That God is more than everywhere. God is every there. Every there is not 
restricted by a permanent location or an address or some geographical area or any particular thing in time or space or place. There is not always where. But where is always somewhere. Where is Pilgrim Journey? 7204 Bethlehem Road, Henrico, Virginia. You are here now. Will you be here two hours from now? No. You will be somewhere else. Your there can be your where, but only temporarily. You are there now, but you won't be there in a little while. But only temporarily can your there be your where. Where is location. Where is permanence. But there can be anywhere or nowhere. There. 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 Where is location? Where is permanent? But there can be anywhere or nowhere. And this is how I related to God. God is every there. Every there. We normally worship God where? In the sanctuary. But today we worship God there in the parking lot. Some folk didn't know God was there in the parking lot until we began to worship God there. There we found God. Now you understand what I'm talking about. But wherever two or more are gathered together in his name, God is there. And every there is God. God is an every there God. Yes, he is. Now, now there also speaks of, uh, to non-places. In the great hymn, the battle hymn of the Republic, the author sees God in unlocatable places. He says, I have seen him trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Where, where is that? He has, he has seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. Where, where is that? In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. Where is that? God is everywhere. As well, every there can be a state of mind. It could mean a, a, a dream or something you imagine. These are not where places. These are their plateness, places. And, and the greatness of God is not just where God is, but their God is. Now, this thought came to me as a result of being locked up in the house in a pandemic when you can't do much else but think about stuff a little deeper than you might think of. As well, uh, it hit me even greater when looking at our scripture today from Psalm 139. Verses 1 through 10. Let me read it again. Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar off. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is in my mouth, you, you know it completely. You hem me in 
in front and behind. You lay your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, even there, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Even there, even there. Allow me, allow me to put some interpretation to what I just read. Thou hast searched me and known me. Church, the all-knowing God also knows you in the vastness of the universe. God seeks you out. God knows you intricately and intimately. God knows your habits when you get up, when you sit down. God understands your thought processes and what impacts your thought processes. God knows what you're going to say before you say it and what you're going to think before you thought it. God covers you on every side. This is wonderful news. The writer of the psalm says that God is so aware of us. The psalmist gets excited in verse 7. He says, where, where shall I go from your spirit or flee from your presence? He says, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take up the wings of the morning or dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there, you are there. Even there. Even there. Not even where. Even there. Even there, your hand shall lead me. Your right hand shall hold me. Even there, God is every there. God is every there because God is every there. Whenever there comes up, God is there. There. God is in your joys. There God is in your sorrows. There in your sickness. There in your health. There in your ups. And there in your downs. There when you're young. And there when you're old. There in your good times and there in your bad times, God is even there. Oh, church, the Bible, the Bible is replete with proofs that God is everywhere. God was in the garden with Adam and Eve. God was in the flood with Noah. He was in bondage with the Hebrew children, with Moses in the wilderness. Even there, he was in the pit with Joseph, in the well with Jonah, in Elijah's cave, at Jacob's wrestling match, in Isaiah's vision. Even there, in Ezekiel's graveyard, God is there in Job's despair. By the rivers of Babylon, God was there when they hung their harps up on the willows. 
even there in the fiery furnace with the Hebrew boys. Somebody said the other one looks like the Son of God. God was there in the lion's den with Daniel, on the battlefield with David, in Hezekiah's sick room, even there, a Roman jail with Paul and Silas, on a shipwreck with Paul, in the grave with Jesus. God is everywhere, even in a pandemic. God is there in the midst of protest. God is there. I know, I know, I know, I know for myself that God is everywhere. How do I know? Because I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now saved am I. God is everywhere. These are not where places. These are their places. Now this thought, I leave it with you, that whatever your circumstances in life, whatever new situation you have to face, whatever issue comes that hadn't come your way before, but now you find yourself in it, I want you to declare God is every fam. And I want you to go back, get your Bibles out, turn to that 139th Psalm, and read it out loud as if you were your own preacher. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down, and you know when I stand up, you perceive my thoughts from afar off. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word can come out of my mouth, you already know it. You encompass me in front and behind. You lay your hands upon me. Oh, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go? Where can I go? Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I make uh, my ascend into the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the morning, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there. Even there, 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 even there. God is everywhere. As the men's chorus comes, we extend this parking lot invitation. Anybody whose heart has been pricked, you want to give your life to Christ, get out your car and come on. As the men's choir come, you are welcome to come and give your life to Christ. parking lot is open.
Doors are open. There's some more. Parking lot is open. Parking lot of the church is open. I came here today looking for a blessing. I came here with Jesus on my mind. And I, I won't, I won't be satisfied until he touch this old heart, this heart of mine. Let me say it again. I came here today looking for a blessing. Yes, I did. I came here with Jesus on my mind. And I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, won't be satisfied until he touch this old heart, this heart of mine. So I want you to stop by here. For a little while, just one touch from you will make our coming here worthwhile. I want you to stop by here for a little while. I want you to touch this old heart of mine. I want you to touch this old heart of mine. Dear Jesus, speak to my heart today. I want you to tell me what you want me to do. I just want to feel your presence. I want to feel your presence right now, Lord. Then I'll be able, I'll be able to make it through. I'm calling on you right now. Stop. Stop by here. Just one touch from you. Just one touch from you. We'll make a spirit here worthwhile. I want you to stop, stop by here, just for a little while, Lord. I want you to touch this old heart of mine. I want you to touch this old heart, this heart of mine. There's one other thing I want to say to you right now, Lord. It's not just me standing in need of a blessing, but it's everybody here who's gathered in your holy name. Our hearts are wide open, and we need to hear a word from you right now, Lord. We don't want our coming here to be in vain. So I want you to stop, stop by here, stop by here for, a while, for a little while, Lord. Just one touch from you, one touch will make our coming here worthwhile. I want you to stop, stop by here, oh, for just a little while, Lord. I want you to touch. This old heart of mine, I want you to touch this old heart of mine. Touch this old heart of mine. Please, please. 
please, Lord. Amen. Thank you, male chorus. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a wonderful service. We hope that uh, we'll be able to do this again uh, at least once on next month. We'll see how the weather persists. And we'll try to do it again per perhaps maybe on the second Sunday. It's uh, Deacon and Trustee Day. If the weather holds, and maybe we'll be back out here again. But in the meantime, I want you to take care of yourselves. Uh, practice all of the mandates uh, that you need to do to stay healthy in this pandemic. Yes, sir. We don't want anyone to fall victim to COVID-19 in our congregation or any of the families of our membership. So do what you have to do. Uh, exercise social discipline. Uh, let's uh, get on the phone and call each other, FaceTime each other, however we can to make sure you see each other's faces uh, so we can all keep our well-being because these are certainly challenging times and uh, so many are right on borderline depressed uh, because of the inability to get out and to do things like you normally do. But hold on. Hold on. And God will lead us out of this and the day will come when we will join again in the fellowship hall of our church and worship God together. Now we're going to give the benediction, the benediction. We have some things. We also want to thank uh, Michael Hodges uh, for drying up the grass this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, uh, you find new ministries in this kind of thing. You know? <laughs> Amen. And to all who have participated today, thank you so much. God bless you. All hearts and minds are clear. The parking lot folk, you got the directions for them? Are you going to let folk go out both ways or what? All right. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for a glorious day, for a wonderful worship service, for being there with us. Now, Lord, go with us as we move from this place to other places. You are not just somewhere. You are everywhere. Thank you, Lord. Bless and keep us in your care. Get us home safely. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and pray. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.